What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson here, and this is Timeless Season 1, Episode 9, The Last Ride of Bonnie and Clyde. So, as I said last week, I wasn't entirely sure how they were going to handle this, because most of the time jumps that they've been using this season, all of them have been very important. So it's like, you know, the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. What if it wasn't just Abraham Lincoln who got assassinated? The Hindenburg. What if it crashed the day after with more important people in there? So they've been exploring stuff like that. This is the first one. I'm just like, how would this affect America? Bonnie and Clyde. What does this have to do with anything? Well, ultimately we do get a pretty good explanation of what's going on. It turns out that apparently Clyde stole from Henry, Henry Ford this key that ties into Rittenhouse somehow. And so uh, Flynn wants it. The Homeland Security lady that's working with them, I think... I can't remember her name. No, it's gone. Um, I'm going to get her name eventually because she's becoming a more important character as the season goes on. But she also knows about Rittenhouse and she's starting to start to realize that they seem to be the big problem behind all this. If it weren't for them, Flynn would not be committing these crimes back in history. So she realizes this. She finds this key that apparently is connected to Flynn through his documents, and so they go back, Wyatt and Lucy end up getting caught up with Bonnie and Clyde and pretending to be uh, the same type of thing, you know, couple stealing, robbing people, <clears throat> and so that's pretty much the basis of the story. There are a couple things that aren't that good in this episode. I would say one is I was really hoping after we found out about Wyatt's wife, I was really hoping we weren't going to go this this way with these two Wyatt and Lucy Lucy no it just it it's so cliche to me because the very first episode they didn't like each other they didn't get along and now in this episode there's the possibility that oh they might hook up oh my gosh here's why this doesn't work because, one, it's a cliche. I'm sick of seeing the same old cliches in all of these shows. And honestly, you know, it's not done poorly. It's not done in a way that's really frustrating. I'm just sick of seeing this storyline where two characters don't get along. Later on down the season, they're probably going to get together. It's almost, it almost always happens. You know, a, a guy and a girl can never just not get along and then be friends later on. No, as soon as they start getting along, oh, it's got to be a relationship, guys. And the problem with all this is, is that it, the show had me thinking they weren't going to do that. You know, at first, I was thinking that because we saw them interacting and hating each other. But once we found out about Wyatt's wife and what happened to her and how he still feels grief over what happened to her, I'm just like, okay, so maybe they're not going to do that. Maybe he's going to get his wife back through time travel, but no. This episode pops up, and now all of a sudden they're about to hook up, and who knows, probably somewhere down the line they are going to get Wyatt's wife back, and now all of a sudden, oh no, he and Lucy are starting to have a thing, and now his wife's back in the picture. Jerry! Jerry! It's, it's all pointless drama, in my opinion. I love what they're doing with the time travel stuff. I love what they're doing with the whole story of Flynn, Rittenhouse, everything involving that. They don't have to add this unnecessary drama in there. I care about these characters enough without you having to throw in, oh, they're hooking up now. I don't care. <laughs> you know, I don't care, really. They, they don't have to hook up for me to be invested in what happens to them. So, yeah, that's that's kind of frustrating. The other thing that's not really frustrating, I just don't understand why they are still doing this, they need to pick, they need to pick something. Either they need to keep a surprise of what this episode is going to be about, or they need to stop making it seem like it's supposed to be a surprise. Because this is like the fourth or fifth episode where they show, okay, at the beginning they show Bonnie and Clyde getting shot up. They have the girl play uh, Bonnie reading a poem about them. And then whenever they get introduced into the story, Lucy's like, it's Bonnie and Clyde. Like it's supposed to be, oh my gosh, it's Bonnie and Clyde, guys. This is what this episode's about. Isn't this awesome? I already knew that, like, last week you know so they, they've done this now I, I'm pretty sure in four or five different episodes where they have that moment where Lucy's just like oh my gosh 
it, it, it's so and so. You know, like the the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. Like they showed that at the very beginning. The title of the episode was the assassination of Abraham Lincoln, and then they have this one shocking scene right before a commercial break where Lucy's just like, "That's the day Abraham Lincoln got assassinated," and everybody's just like, "Oh." Just like, it's it's it seems like you're trying to tell me to be shocked, but the title of your episode, the very first scene in the episode, tell me not to be shocked. What are you trying to convey here? Either just have the characters being shocked without trying to shock the audience, or really keep the the mystery in the episode. You know, just have the title of the episode be something kind of vague. You know, like crime runs in the family or. I don't know, something like that. I'm not good at making episode names. But something crime-related to where we're just like, crime, What what is this all about? And then, you know, if you wanted to sh show, like, a shot-up car, maybe then people could start speculating, oh, it, what if it's Bonnie and Clyde? And then as soon as she's, as soon as they see, oh, it's Bonnie and Clyde, then the audience goes, oh, crap, that's cool. I'm ready to watch this episode. So the way they just got it set up, it doesn't fit very well. So all of that said and done, you know, that's kind of the frustration of this episode. The rest of it was pretty good. Uh, the two actor and actress playing Bonnie and Clyde, I mean, they do a good job of portraying kind of these in-love psychopaths <laughs> that are running amok across the country. Uh, the story with Rufus and what, you know, Flynn's in this police station trying to get the police to track them down and kill them so that he can get Bonnie's necklace. Meanwhile, Rufus ends up being taken in by the police because he was seen with Wyatt and Lucy, who escaped with Bonnie and Clyde, and Flynn tries to get him to be interrogated. He manages to get out of it, and it's all, it's interesting. You know, it's interesting to see, will Rufus manage to sneak his way out of the situation? He does. And so now Flynn's on the, on the back foot, and he's trying to catch up. And ultimately, it all comes to a pretty climactic end where we see... This guy who betrayed Bonnie and Clyde shows up at the cabin way too early. We know that the police are on the way. Rufus shows up to warn them. And ultimately we have kind of a standoff where Clyde shoots his his friend that was helping them, kills him, and then they try to take the necklace, but the police start shooting up the place. So then Bonnie and Clyde try to leave. Clyde gets shot, so Bonnie like doesn't want him to go without her. So she goes to shoot one of the cops and takes a bunch of bullets while the rest of the poem is being read about Bonnie and Clyde. So, yeah, it's it's a very emotional scene as well. And on top of that, I mean, there was a lot of emotion in this too. I mean, we have the one scene where you see Wyatt's talking about his and Lucy's, how he proposed to her, and you just know the entire time that he's actually talking about the way he proposed to his wife. And you can see the emotion it's bringing back on him. You know, the thought of her does something to him that just it's kind of heartbreaking to watch so there was a lot of emotion in it it was kind of interesting seeing them pretend to be a couple but that doesn't necessarily mean i want them to be a couple you know it's just it's one thing to see two people who start working together well who got a good friendship pretend to be a couple that's kind of funny there are moments where you could see it's kind of awkward for them i mean there's one moment where they're sitting on the couch and why why it's just sitting there and all of a sudden he's just like oh and Lucy like curls up on top of him and like tries to look all natural and it just looks really awkward. That's kind of funny. And watching these two pretend to be a couple is interesting as well because you get to see them act around each other a lot differently. You know, they've started to build a friendship in the past few episodes, but we still see them disagreeing on certain things. We still see them arguing at certain moments where they disagree. So it's it's funny to see them, oh, now they have to pretend that, like they're in love. That's funny. But then, like I said, they start throwing in the possibility of a romance, and that sort of throws it off. Um, but, you know, that it didn't ruin the episode. It didn't throw me off of the episode at all. I still really enjoyed this episode. I mean, you have a really good story built around this really interesting couple here, you know, Bonnie and Clyde. That You could do a lot with that. That's a lot of fun. And they took advantage of it. And ultimately, it ends in kind of a somber note in that we see Flynn gets what he wants. You know, he gets the key. He opens up whatever the clock thing is that he was, I don't know, was that a museum? I, I assume that'll be explained later. But he gets some sort of parchment thing, letter, 
opens it up and starts reading it and you could see the look on his face like he's really interested in what he's reading. So it, it ends on kind of a somber note there. They didn't succeed in stopping Flynn. Flynn got what he wanted. Yeah, it sucks. And on top of that, we see the Homeland Security lady is talking to Rufus and clearly she is trying to find out more about Rittenhouse. She's trying to go as deep as she can. She knows Connor Mason is involved somehow. And so she talks to Rufus and Rufus pretty much tells her, look, back off. Not because I'm threatening you, because I'm warning you. I, I don't want to see you or anyone else you love hurt. So just stay away from me. Stay away from this. And ultimately, she kind of says, screw that. I, I'm going to take down Rittenhouse. I know what I was signing up for. I'm doing this. So it's kind of interesting to see where this is going to go. Is she going to manage to do something to Rittenhouse, or is Rittenhouse going to get to her before she manages to do anything? I have a feeling that we are going to see somebody that she loves die very soon. But it's a good, interesting story. I love the little backstory going on with Rittenhouse and all that stuff going on in the background while they're time traveling. That's a lot of fun. You know, that that is the enjoyable part of, about this episode, or not about this episode, about this show, that it's not just about the time travel. It's also about this huge conspiracy theory that they're slowly figuring out more about as the series goes along. And that's why I hate that it has to be marred by this stupid relationship drama. You know, that's I don't need that in this show. I, I have plenty to enjoy. Please don't try to throw this in there to add drama whenever his wife comes back. Because I know that's where they're going with this. Um, but I think that's about it for this episode. There's also some stuff with her, Lucy's fiancé, kind of created by the time paradox they created. Anyway, there's some stuff there with them, but clearly they're just setting up for what's going on with Lucy and Wyatt, so that was just more of that thrown in. Uh, and I think, I honestly think that's it for this episode. So, yeah, those are my thoughts on it. I'm looking forward to next week, see what they're going to do next. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What did you like and dislike about this episode? Are you in agree with, with me on the whole relationship stuff, or... Do you just not care? Let me know. We can talk about it, discuss all that good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe for future timeless reviews, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.